Okay guys, this week what we are going to focus on is something called volume. Okay, and volume is pretty easy. It is going to um, kind of build on what you learned in fifth grade. Um, volume is going to be uh, using a formula. Volume is equal to length times width times height. The major difference between um, fifth grade and sixth grade volume is in fifth grade, you didn't use fractions or decimals when you calculated volume. You used whole numbers. Well, in sixth grade, you're going to use fractions and decimals when you calculate for volume. Um, you also will be given the volume at times um, and length and width and have to solve for height, or you might have to solve for length, um, or you might have to solve for width, things like that. So. And you know how to do that because you just finished up that unit on algebra. So we're going to go through some examples of volume and how to solve for it um, in this lesson, in this instructional video. Okay, let's take a look at a few examples for volume. Okay, guys, let's take a look at this rectangular prism. Um, we know it's a rectangular prism because it does not have all the same... Um, dimensions right if it had the same dimensions it would be a cube but we don't have that here so the formula for volume for rectangular prism is volume is equal to length times width times height okay so we have our length here right length width height okay so, we're going to plug in the values that we have and that we know. So, I'm going to keep my volume is equal to 4 and 1 fourth times 2 and 3 fourths, that's my width, times 5 for my height. Now, when we multiply fractions, we have to convert them into, the. when we have mixed numbers, we have to convert them into improper fractions in order to multiply them. So, we're going to rewrite it again. Volume is equal to 4 times 4 is 16, plus 1 is 17. So, we're going to change 4 and 1 fourth into 17 fourths. Then we have 2 and 3 fourths. We need to change that into an improper fraction. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So, that's going to be 11 fourths. Times, and now when we have a whole number and we're multiplying fractions, we have to put our whole number over 1. Okay? So now our next step is going to be to simplify this. So I'm going to multiply my denominators first because it's easier. 4 times 4 is 16 times 1 is 16. So my denominator here is going to be 16. Now, you're allowed to use a calculator, and we encourage you to use a calculator and do your work carefully. So 17 times 11 is 187. 187 times 5 is 935. So we end up with 900. 35 over 16. Now that's an improper fraction, so we have to simplify that into a mixed number. So we're going to take 935 and divide that by 16. 16 goes to 93 five times. Sixteen goes into thirty-five eight times. I'm going to regroup, and I get 58 and 7 sixteenths for my volume. Volume is equal to 58 and 7 sixteenths centimeters cubed for my answer. Okay, so there's that one. So, we had our formula. Volume is, is equal to length times width times height. Then I filled in the values. For what I knew, I knew my length, my width, and my height. Then I converted my mixed numbers into improper fractions. Then I multiplied my denominators. I multiplied my numerators. I got an improper fraction. Then I turned that improper fraction into a mixed number. For a final answer of the volume of this rectangular prism of 58 and 7 sixteenths centimeters cubed. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Okay, we're going to do another example. Okay, before we go any further, what is volume? 
What does volume mean? So what you should be thinking is volume is the amount of space that a three-dimensional object takes up. Okay, so I want you to think about um, like a box. So the volume of a box would be how much can you fit inside that box? Okay, how much matter does that, can you fit inside there? Okay, so that's volume. How much can, how much space does something take up a three-dimensional object? Okay, um, you have notes like in the Google slide um, with the definition of volume. So make sure you, that you review those. Okay, let's take a look at this rectangular prism. So here you see that the volume is given to us. So the volume is 75 inches cubed. And then we have a width of four inches. We have a height of two and a half inches. What we don't have is a length. So we do not know what the length of this um, rectangular prism is. So that's what we're gonna solve for here. I'm busy. Shh. Over there. Each piece rolls quietly. Okay, so let's work this out. So the very first thing we're going to do, again, is we are going to list our formula. Volume is equal to length times width times height. Okay, now I know what my volume is. My volume is equal to 75 inches cubed. I don't know the length. I do know the width is four inches. I do know the height is two and a half inches. So what I'm gonna do now is simplify on the right side of this equation. So I'm gonna keep my 75 on the left and I'm gonna take four times two and a half, okay? So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna say four over one times, and I need to turn two and a half into an improper fraction. Well, two times two is four, plus one is five. So that's gonna be five over two. Well, four times five is 20 over two. So it's going to be 20 over two L. Okay, what is 20 over two equal to? Do you know? I hope you said 10. So I'm gonna rewrite that again and I'm gonna say 75 is equal to 10 L. How do I get L by itself? 10L, that should signify to you that that is multiplication. So what you're going to do is divide, how do we undo multiplication? We use inverse operation, which is division. We're going to divide by 10 on both sides, right? Okay, so because this problem is in fractions, we wanna make sure that our answer is also in, in fractional form, okay? So I'm guessing that you can look at 75 and you're dividing it by 10. So you should know that all that is is moving your decimal point one spot to the left, right? So it's going to be 7.5 is equal to L. But I want my answer as a fraction because this problem has the dimensions as fractional units. So it's actually gonna be seven and one half inches is equal to L for our answer. Now, should I check that? Yes. So I should now say volume is equal to length times width times height. Volume is equal to seven and one half times four times two and one half. Okay. So I'm going to check that out. And if I'm just, if I'm checking that, if I were you in a calculator, if you know that one half is 0.5 as a decimal, I would just take 7.5 times four times 2.5 in a calculator. I do get 75 inches cubed for my answer. So this problem checks out, we are correct, okay? Okay, I wanna talk about one more thing in this, um, video. So I told you the formula for volume is length times width times height. And that is true. There is one more way, one other formula that you can use to find volume. Volume can also be found by taking the base area of an object and multiplying that by the height. So I just kind of want to show you what that looks like. Okay. So, um, I'm going to, 
you know my drawing skills here we go here we go look at that I should have been an art teacher you guys are missing out so here we are okay here's my I feel like I should have a dot there look at that that's not terrible right so yeah it's not terrible uh-huh okay so if I tell you that the base area so I'm talking about this bottom we worked an area last week, right? So I'm talking about this bottom rectangle here, okay, on this prism. If I tell you that the base area is equal to 21 inches squared and the height here is 10 inches, we can calculate volume based on that information, okay? So your volume here would be equal to base area times height. Your volume is equal to 21 times 10. It's a terrible zero. Volume is going to be equal to 210 inches cubed. Okay? Because if you think about it, how would base area here be calculated? Well, you would multiply length here times the width, right? Length times width gives you area. So base area is the same thing as length times width. So that's just one more way that you can find volume. And this is another formula that can be used to calculate volume, okay? So you might see that base area times height as um, another formula that can be used to calculate the volume of a rectangular prism. Okay, that's it for this instructional video. I'll be back with a couple more videos and a couple more examples. Keep up the good work, guys.